G'day everyone, Luke here from Hitch Up Adventures. Thanks for tuning in with us today. I'm gonna to talk about that dirty word called solar and batteries because it seems to be the biggest talk of the town when you come to your free camps. How much you're getting, how much storage you have, and can you actually get a good site in a free camp to be able to rejuvenate your system so that you can stay for days and days. Now there's so many different ways to look at the maths involved in this kind of scenario. And I think there's gonna probably take a few more videos to, to really help you understand this better. But there's sort of a couple of scales that I wanna look at. There's the one of how much solar power panel you can actually put into your van, how much battery supply and storage you've actually got on hand, and how you can use that storage at night, and then your solar power paddles during the day can actually top that back up to be ready for the next day. The other thing is, is your usage. Now, this is the one thing that people really can't quite um, get their head around. Some people think that you can use your caravan uh, exactly like you do at home. You know, you can turn on your washing machine, you can have your heater on at night, which is your split system air con, or you could have your actual air con cooling as well. Uh, you can run your fridge, your lights, and charge everything up and think that you can um, go day in and day out with that kind of setup. Now, yes, you can do it, but most likely you've um, gone and bought yourself a caravan and it's had a solar setup that was already in there and batteries in it to start with, thinking that that's gonna work. Now, the reality is the caravan manufacturers don't know what you're gonna do specifically in your travels. Are you gonna be that free camper? Are you gonna be the person that sits at a caravan park and powers up all the time and has a night here or there stopping over? So they're the things you need to be really clear with when you're looking at buying a caravan and researching who you're gonna buy your van through and what that looks like because it is very hard to upgrade systems properly if you've already got your caravan built. You can spend thousands of dollars on reinstallation costs and upgrading and you know, re-engineering where your batteries are gonna to go to hold new lithiums if you've got AGMs. So design at the start is definitely the best way to get around that. Now, I'm just gonna take you through a few things here today to give you an idea of what we do um, while we're free camping here. Um, we've turned up with 100% full charge on our 300 amp uh, Enerdrive battery. Uh, on the roof of here, we've actually got two, uh, I think it's 180 panels, and maybe 190s, I'm not sure, I can't check that uh, specifically. So let's call it 360 odd watts, maybe 380 watts on the roof. Um, and we've got a solar blanket. Now, originally we've had to upgrade this van because when we bought it, it did have the 120 AGM uh, batteries, two of them in underneath outside, which is great. Um, but we just found it wasn't enough for us to do what we needed to do. So we all know lithium is a great option. Now we've gone to lithium, we've got a few other little challenges. We've got a bigger storage capacity, a 300 amp lithium, and you think, wow, that's a big battery. Well, we do find over days and days of use of free camping that that does start to diminish. Now, especially when you have a day like today with great sun, you can get that happening and you can rebuild that supply. But on other days, it can get quite tricky. So you need to plan out your battery as well. So let me take you through um, what the best way is to start thinking about how you're going to um, manage your battery uh, during the day and at night. And the best way to do it is get yourself some sort of battery management system. Um, now we have the Enerdrive, which is great. The Enerdrive battery by itself has its own battery management app. You just jump on by Bluetooth. It works seamless, it's really great. I can check it in the car while we're driving as well. So this is definitely a way to manage what's happening with our usage. So. Right now in the sun, we're sitting here, full sun. Um, we've got uh, the fridge running. Our fridge is 12 volt, it's um, 240. It is not a gas fridge. So if you had a gas fridge, your battery supply is gonna last you so much better as well. Again, there's positives and negatives to gas, and especially when you're having to drive because you can't use a gas fridge. You do have to jump on your 12 volt. So we're full 12 volt on everything other than the Barbie and the gas cooktop. So um, battery is important for us. So. We're 100% now, it's about, um, what time is it? 10.46 in the morning. We've had a look at our angles of the sun. We've set up our van, so we're gonna get that early sun, midday sun, and end sun on our top panels. And we're gonna have to use our panel down here to chase things around to make sure we get good power. So let's go and have a look a little bit more about the effectiveness of our solar system and how it's working right now, so that you can get an idea um, of how much power you can get 
and how you can actually use your solar to not have those issues at night or if you're gonna stay for a long couple of weeks and you're gonna get some rainy weather. So we've just turned up to the free camp and we've been at a powered site this morning. We're 100% on battery and you can see that right now. Okay, so that makes it um, ready to go. And I just wanna do a bit of a, a study for you. So at the moment, it's showing that we're using currently zero amps. Now, the reason we're doing zero amps is we are in full sun and we're only really running the fridge at the moment. We've got a 12 volt fridge, so we don't have a, a gas fridge. So right now we're getting a bit of an equilibrium of, of usage of the fridge versus the actual sun that we're getting. Now, we're not gonna get that sun all day and that's the tricky part. Um, this is where you've got diminishing returns is probably the way I can say it. You've got to pick when you're going to use your power, you're going to pick um, how much of it you're going to use at one time and when you can catch back up on it. So if you're getting a good solar input during the day, you'd want to be charging your phones, your iPads, your laptops, things like that. You don't want to be out using them during the day and then at night coming back and charging them while you're already running your lights at night, your fridge at night, perhaps you're going to run your Starlink as well and do a bit of you know, internet searching or whatever for your next day's trip planning. So you've got to be, be realistic because if you use it too hard at night and right now we're only getting even power in as what we're putting out and we're not even using much, each day you're going to keep slowly going down and down and down. And that's the difference between the battery storage system that you've got and the solar power that you've got. And they're a bit of a scale really. You've got to think how much do I want to use in that night time? And that depends on how big a battery you're going to have. Think about your day and think how quickly can I re-top this back up so that it is ready for the night. And that's how much solar power you actually need. So I've got a couple of panels on the roof and I'm gonna just try and, um, I've got a little solar panel out there as well. And I'm just gonna rig it up as well and just see what we can get on this battery charger now. I'll place that one there for a sec. Oh, hang on. Here we go. So. I'll just uh, hook this direct up. It's got its own regulator and a blanket. It's a bit dusty in here at the moment. And I've just got to get a little bit more length on that. Okay, now we've got a, a panel put in and it's still now reading 100% and we're not using any amps. So we're, we're basically even, even. There we go, 2.5, 2.7 amps, 2.6, there you go. So that, the solar blanket I've put in is now getting us extra power. It doesn't need it, but essentially we're getting a positive charge now. So if I'm gonna use a few things now, I know that I can charge a phone, um, you know, charge the iPads, whatever, um, use the pumps, maybe have a shower, because the, the pumps do use a fair bit of power when they kick on. And I'm not gonna be losing any of my battery charge at the moment. This won't last all day, and that's why you can move a panel around your setup to make sure that you're getting an addition. Now one thing that you may be thinking, well why don't I just plug in to um, a point which is connected to my um, battery already and the solar regulator that is in my van? Well that's another big question um, uh, to answer and it's actually quite technical. So when you buy your caravan and you get your solar panels on the roof, if you don't buy enough and you want to upgrade later, you have to buy the same panels and you have to wire them in the exact same way. Whether they're parallel or um, in series um, is dependent on how that's gonna work with your solar regulator. Now I've got the Enerdrive DC-DC uh, 40 in the van there um, and it can take up to 800 watts of panels on the roof. Now I couldn't get those panels to increase um, my capacity or, or the same number. And I did a bit of shopping around um, uh, or I say matching panels, I should say, and I shopped around, I couldn't get them in time. So if I had gone and bought just the panels I had access to, um, they actually weren't the same rating. They were a lower rating. So I would think, oh, okay, I'll whack another 400 watts of solar on the roof, put them into the same um, DC-DC charger that I have, um, and that'll give me all the power I need. Unfortunately, because those power panel, the power in the panels and they're rated lower, it actually brought all of the panels down to that minimum. So I was actually negating the current panels that I had in the amp rating that they could put in per hour. So 
the way around that is if you're going to add solar panels to your caravan on a setup you've already got if you can't get the exact matching panels and rewire it the same way because it's hard to run wiring through walls in caravans as you might know after you've started you would have to then have another solar regulator and bring that down back into your battery so they're separate um, that can, as long as they're matching panels, that'll work well with that solar regulator and then your current one will work as well and come back to your battery banks. So that's why my panel, um, my portable panel, is running off its own little um, regulator. This is just a, an inner drive, oops, she's a bit dusty, um, 40 MPPT, sorry, 30 amp MPT um, charger that you get um, with, uh, actually it was the original from the van, so I use that as a top up. So. That does this job really well and it's not affecting anything because it's going straight to the battery bank so we'll let that tick along and hopefully when we come back this afternoon we won't be low on any battery just got the 200 watt king's solar blanket there now it does matter which way you have your blanket facing and i'll just show you a little thing here let me get organized so right now we're getting no extra amps coming in which is fine and if you move your blanket and just get it up on a bit of an angle, look at that, 0.7 difference. So I'm really only getting that advantage from probably these couple of panels. So these blankets, they're good sometimes, but they've got to be the exact angle to get that wattage. So yes, you do have to chase the sun around and you'll get the most out of something like this. Make sure it's clean. Every panel, every little cell needs to be cleaned to get the most out of it. Um, I've just shaded that a bit actually, and I've got minus 0.7. Oh, there you go, that's interesting, watch this. So I'm at point, point 0.8, let's have a look. There we go, so 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and I'll just show you how much this can be. I'm just covering one hand across that panel there. We've gone back to zero. There you go, covering one arm over two, minus 0.5. Let's try and cover three panels. There you go, 1.3, 1.4, and that is only an arm of shadow. So I hope you can see that. One arm of shadow makes a huge difference on your angle of your solar. So you know, all these little things to consider. Um, we'll talk more about a better design system, perhaps in another video, but this hopefully gives you an idea about usage, how you can get it. Right now I'm getting absolutely nothing, minus 2.7, I'm smashing all of my shade it is not a good way to have a panel so you do have to move your portable panels and get the right angle so hopefully that helps you understand how well that can work so this is the upgraded dc dc charger i've got here which really helps to connect to the car while we're driving to boost it in you've got channel one channel two channel one is the solar panels on the roof and it's saying it's full great uh, currently we've got 14.2 volts of our lithium battery and we're getting 1.1 amps coming in extra so we're full it's just extra wasted power at the moment and channel 2 is when we're connected to the car so I'll have to show that to you another time so I've been out all day today and I had the uh, blanket out the front here and I left it there all day so it only probably got a bit of battery power for a little bit of the time um, and we come back and we're at 85% now I did say we were at 75%, however, in between filming, I had to quickly jump on the internet. So for about an hour, I was uh, had the inverter and everything running, and my laptop plugged in, and we got down to 68. So we are now at 85, so that gives us a gain of 17% in a day, and we had poor um, solar for a little bit. So if you have a look there, we wouldn't have got anything. The solar blanket was probably from halfway through the day just covered because of the caravan so there you go hopefully that helps you how you can recover now um, we'll monitor that one more day and just see how we're going so we've got plenty of juice to have more fun tonight do a lot of things um, and run Starlink and stuff um, the one thing I will talk about um, probably tomorrow is what happens and how we can recover the battery if we did get flat because how it connects to the car is such an important thing and making sure that's all working properly Good morning. Stay to a little bit. <sighs> Fresher here this morning. Got myself a beautiful drip bag, artisty coffee. Ooh, need that. Anyway, sun's coming up. It's gonna be a nice sunny day.
just checking the battery scenario for you. So we were 85% last night. We uh, didn't use battery much last night. It's just a fridge running. We uh, had a fire. It's beautiful with the neighbours. We? We're on 73% today. All right. So we lost 12% overnight. We've got to get that recovery. And today's a travel day. So it's a bit different when you have a travel day. You can you can charge back up pretty quickly if you've got your car and your caravan set up properly. So I'm going to pack everything up here. We'll check what the solar gives us just in the next sort of, I don't know, hour, hour and a bit by the time we pack up. And then we'll show you how it works when we connect our car because that's where you get the biggest gains. When you're driving, you can really get your solar boost um, or your Anderson plugs from your caravan, boosting your caravan and getting your batteries back up to speed, ready for your next free camp. We're all packed up and um, we used the internet there just for a few extra little things this morning. Um, so we dropped down a battery again, but I just want to show you what it's like when you um, get your setup between your car and your caravan correctly to get battery management um, fixed and getting your alternator in your car to actually charge up your battery. So we've got a DC-DC charger in the Rhino, the Red Arc, BCDC 1225. And then in the caravan, we have the inner drive um, DC to DC 40 amp, I think it's called. So what happens is, is the power comes from the car and then goes into the DC-DC charger on channel two, and then it manages the power into the battery the best it can. So that's a better way. A lot of caravans have solar regulators and that would then be charging a battery at the same time as your car running the Anderson in as well. So that's another way of, of running it, but you've got to understand how your caravan has been wired up to manage it best. Now, what we've got down here is the Anderson plug there, okay, on there, which is separate from our 12 pin plug. Now, a lot of people use the 12 pin plug, but to be honest, if you're running this kind of current through these bottom pins, they can melt super easy. So if you've got the opportunity to take that out, do so. Um, and then I think on a lot of like Jayco's um, from memory, in the bottom of their um, plugs, they have the red and the black um, heavy wiring that is usually just straight to the fridge. It doesn't run to the batteries. So but when you um, go to travel, you can turn your gas off but leave your car charging your fridge. So it doesn't go to your battery from memory, but they may have changed that in newer models, but definitely in the older ones, that's something that they did. So again, understanding where the Anderson plug goes, what it's doing um, to get you the charge that you need. So, you know, again, we're on lower battery here now. We're on 74%, uh, but look at those amps. We're getting 24.3 amps currently coming in. It's charging, so I get that 24 amps as I'm driving. So. Uh, technically, we have to be driving for an hour to get 24 more amps into that battery. So, there you go. That's just the smart alternator stopping, actually, in, in um, these newer cars. They think, oh, what's going on? I'm not sure. So, the way to... It'll recognise. There you go. It's just recognised. The car itself now is idling higher to get that to work. So, yeah, you've got a smart alternator. It works different to an older car as well. And the amperage will be totally different. But there you go. So I hope that uh, helps you understand. Um, you know, we can do two or three days, be quite low on battery. And if we're going to drive three hours, we should get um, 75 amps back into that battery, which is obviously plenty for a full day and a full night. If you need to be full up to 100%, you're going to have to drive, you know, quite a few hours to actually pump that 25 amps in per hour and gain back up. So our magic number is 302 amps. So yeah, we'll see after this little short trip. I think we're only driving an hour today, so it'll be interesting to see how we go and what that ends up. Um, we're currently in the Mar Maragul, Mar Maragul campground, I think it is, um, just south of Kuina. It's beautiful, little campground here. Plenty of sunny spots, um, really cheap, 38 bucks a night for the kids. We saw a dingo this morning and a great place to base yourself if you're heading um, around Kakadu for like Jim Jim Falls or going down to Magook. So, it's, a, it's usually, I think it's the first one in on your left hand side as you're coming in to um, Kakadu. So, all right, let's get in the road and I'll tell you how we're going for batteries um, once we get to camp. There's another dingo. There's another dingo. Ooh, hang on. Oh, there he is over there. Look, he's watching us. He knows there's some food around. There you go. Dingo. Hopefully you can see him. 
Yeah, it's just running along over there. Pretty cool. All right, well, that's two dingoes today. So anyway, you've got to be a uh, bit dingo aware for sure. You don't want to get um, get them upset at all. Anyway, we'll catch you when we're set up and we'll have a look at the batteries again. So we've uh, set up here at Merrill Campground, which is near the famous Cahills Crossing, which all the crocs are, and we'll do another little video on that one individually. But uh, it's beautiful, nice little camp set up here. And um, I wanted to just talk about solar again. <laughs> um, so we had a little drive, we only had about an hour because we dropped into Jabiru, had a little uh, quick shop. Um, we're up to 89%. Um, um, oh, there's big flies here, watch out for those ones. They're a bit of a bit buzzy. Um, uh, and we're getting about uh, anywhere between, you know, 0.5 and up to 1.6 amps at the moment on this one. Now, what I wanted to go back to is, is an app. And I know that's really designed mobby for lithium batteries, um, but it certainly helps you monitor things because when you get a little gauge like this, your 12.6 uh, showing there, that's my um, AGM battery. It's a 100 amper under the uh, bonnet of the Rhino there. Or you've got a gauge like this. You know, that might be somewhere inside your caravan. There you go, 13.3 volts. And you start to monitor it from these kinds of gauges. But what actually happens is, depending on where that gauge is actually put in and how it's actually um, wired and looped in, it could actually be um, reading the current that you're actually using. So you might have your fridge and things on and it will start to drop down rather than the actual battery um, readings. And you tend to look at your look at your numbers all the time, and you're like, oh wow, look that one's 13.3, this one's 12.6, I'm I'm down to 11.7, it's going to cut out. Um, you know, starting to know those numbers is important because you want to um, make sure that your fridges are going to work inside your cars at low voltage. Um, most fridges have multiple settings on them, so you can um, have them cut out at a higher um, battery setting or a lower one if you want, something like 10.8, I think, is the lowest ends. Um, but you're always looking at this gauge going, oh, I've got to get more power, I've got to get more power. But you actually don't know how much you've got to get. And that's what can be quite challenging. And uh, there's definitely some funny reels out there, right? With, uh, people saying, check the battery, check the battery, check the battery. You know, where am I up to? What's my amperage? Um, and they're always relying on that number, but it's such a big difference uh, knowing where it is to, to get to the top or um, in an AGM style battery or lead acid battery, you know, what is um, actually going to be cutting out and wrecking that battery. So, um, Anyway, I'll chuck on the blanket and we'll see what we can get up to uh, the Savo. We're on, uh, there you go, getting back to a little bit there. Um, 89 still, but I don't think we're going to get much. If we get 92 by the end of the day, I'll be happy. So I'm going to hook up the blanket and see what we can get. At the moment, the solar is jumping around a fair bit. It, it gets up to about 1 1.2, 1 1.3, there you go, up to 1. And then it drops back to 0, so that's quite interesting. Anyway, we'll, we'll plug in the, uh, the blanket and just see how much joy we can get out of that now. Good old one-handed Anderson plug. Ooh. Ooh. I can't do that one-handed. Okay, here we go, got it in. And look at this, what a cracker, 5.2. That is awesome. So, that will be really interesting to see what we can get over the next couple of hours. It's now uh, 20 past one. The sun is like beaming straight down, so we're getting really good angles on the uh, on the panels and everything. And we'll see what we can get. 89% at 120. Let's see how we go. All right, so end of the day now, and um, definitely no more sun. And just going to check where we got for the day. We got up to 87%. So. We're going to be sweet for um, tonight, no worries, and plenty more days to come. Um, we're going to be here for three nights, so yeah, we've got plenty of battery, um, and that should be good to manage. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what kind of results you can get, that, that solar being double the battery. And that's what everyone talks about. So that's 600 watts um, of, of solar running into a 300 amp hour lithium battery, and how, you know, how much you can actually use overnight, uh, and how you can design your system. Now, a lot of people um, do, as I said, get it wrong and, and try and design it a bit later. Um, if you're gonna have bigger systems and add more panels later on, you'd wanna look at a, another solar regulator to run those. Um, 
I think I'll do another video about some really specifics because I've spoken to a lot of people out there that have uh, 1200 watt of solar, 600 amp of lithium, and they're still running out because they, their expectation of usage is so different to the reality of what you can do. And they just can't recover. It's, they, unless they go to a powered site, and get that huge amount of power coming in, charging up their batteries, they just can't recover their solar, um, their battery systems from solar alone. So um, anyway, it's a great way to live um, if you're gonna be conservative with power. Um, we're happy with our inner drive upgrade, it's been great for us. We haven't yet to run out of power at all um, uh, over our stays and we've had a good enough, good enough amount of sun. So um, yeah, anyway, thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions on our system here or solar or how any of that can work, um, pop a comment down below, happy to answer that one. Um, thanks very much for watching everyone. Um, cheers, we'll catch you next time on Hitch Up Adventures.